Well, hi folks, and welcome to our weekly video from the churches of St Mary's, Lamberhurst and St Luke's Matfield. Greetings to you. Um, this video has changed beyond recognition in the time it's been made. So what we originally made has been scrapped, and uh, this new video is uh, much, much better. I've picked up a little theme uh, later in the video with Roger, our colleague, my colleague here in the Benefice, um, to talk a little bit around blessing. Uh, originally, we planned to do something around worship this week, um, but our conversation last week was so good uh, and the positive feedback was such that I thought, let's just finish that conversation. As we do that, I want to encourage you, uh, if you are a bookworm, this is a book uh, you would enjoy, I hope. Um, it's called The Grace Outpouring. Uh, it's by Roy Godwin and Dave Roberts. It tells the story of the community at Falder Brennan, a place I visited in Wales, down there, I think in Pembrokeshire. And um, well, well worth uh, a visit to go and have a look, to go and see uh, if you get the chance to go and stay there. This book tells you all about it. And really, uh, it's the power of blessing. Um, I made some of you laugh in a sermon a few uh, months ago, telling about the time when I read this book in my previous parish, and I spent the next two weeks just blessing everybody uh, as I walked around the village, as I walked around uh, the suburb of the city we were in. I would bless people at bus stops and bless people driving by and bless people in the shops and bless people at the schools, and not with a literal prayer uh, where I would lay hands on them, but just saying, Lord, bless them, bless them, bless them, bless them. And you know your mood just lifts because you can't dislike, you can't be grumpy about that which you are blessing. Well, a couple of years ago, somebody sent me uh, through the post uh, Roy Godwin's follow-up book, The Way of Blessing. I would encourage these two books to you. Um, originally, as I say, we weren't going to think about any of this this week. We were going to be thinking about worship and talking to some of our musicians and worship leaders. We'll save that. But for now, let's go straight to the man himself, the Reverend Roger Bishop. Well, star of last week's video, uh, Roger, it's great to have you back. We're going to have just a briefer conversation this morning um, around an aspect of prayer that we talked about, but I did feel we, we left a little bit undone, and that was um, the statement we both made that blessing and, and blessing as a priest, blessing others, is something that we, we find very powerful. Um, why is that? Why why do you think that the, the blessing bit speaks to us both so much? What is it about blessing that, that really sort of forms part of your ministry? I suppose it's because it's such a huge reminder of the blessing of life, the blessing of this world, the blessing of the fact that we actually exist, let alone anything else, and reminding ourselves and hopefully reminding those we are blessing that God is there, God is present with us, our very existence is dependent on him, and a way of giving thanks and calling God's presence afresh, you know, re reminding everybody that God is there with us the whole time. Um, and it's something we do at the end of every service, really, isn't it? I mean, there are one or two occasions in the year, like Good Friday, yeah. where it's removed. But on the whole, we sort of we finish our church gatherings. And sometimes even in house groups and things, we might pray a blessing or on a house yeah. visit. We might finish with a little prayer for the person that includes the sort of calling down God's blessing um, on the house, on the person, on the situation maybe we've talked about. On a, on a broken or fragile situation. I guess what I've been reflecting on in the last week, which has surprised me a little bit, is that probably the blessing and blessing others is more of our ministry than perhaps we first realized, that actually it does impact across every single thing we do, with young and old, with you know, churchgoers and non-churchgoers, with wedding couples, baptism families. That's sort of the common thread, really, is, is you or I as a priest acting within that but also the sort of blessing element. We want to be a blessing. We want them to know God's blessing and to receive God's blessings. It's quite a powerful, powerful little myth. It, it is, and I think it encourages, hopefully, encourages people, as you say, people going through a difficult situation or people just in everyday life, 
um, being reminded of God's presence and opening themselves up to God's presence and reminding us that we can be a blessing to each other, which I think yeah. you know, we sometimes forget. Um, and you know, that God can work through each of us and we can bless each each other through God's help, God's love flowing through us. Sure. But, but do you think it's, you mentioned, and we mentioned last week about, you know, we both give a blessing at the end of the service, as, as do most priests. Is it something that only a priest can do? <laughs> this, is the this is the question that gets us both relieved from our duties. Um, I, I think it's a definite priestly gift. I mean, I, I think I mentioned last week, my favourite little bit of the Bible is Numbers 12, or my favourite bit of the Bible around blessing is Numbers 12, where you get um, Aaron's priestly blessing. And I think that's very clearly given. It's an Old Testament image, but it's very clearly given um, to, the, to the priests. I think it's a great privilege for the priest within the ordered church and the way churches, um, Church of England churches and other churches like ours are established that the priest offers the blessing. I, I, I'm not convinced that it should only be priests. I think in our day-to-day -day life as Christians, we should be and can be blessing others. You don't need to then ring the priest and say, look, you know, I want to pray a blessing on grandma. Can you, you know, actually you, you might pray that either in that person's presence or, um, or, or for them in your own private prayers. So I think I'd strongly argue that, you know, other Christians can bless. Um, and I think the more we can be blessing others, um, as I've said earlier in this video, I think, I think blessing changes us. I think blessing changes the world around us. I, I think for other Christians to join in that is a really powerful thing. Um, mm. But obviously within the ordered life of the church, it is something which is given to the priest to do. Um, and, and that's a privilege. It's a huge, huge privilege. What, what do you yeah. think? Is, is that just nonsense yeah. on my part? No, I agree absolutely. So if we're going to get defrocked, we get defrocked together. But um, no, I mean, in the liturgical con context, uh, yeah, it is something reserved for the priest. And as, as you say, I think there's good scriptural uh, precedent for that. But you know, I wouldn't think it at all odd if someone said to me, and it doesn't happen very often, but if someone said to me, God bless you, yeah, um, and meant it, then... I wouldn't think, oh, what are they doing? You know, this is this is taking my function away. <laughs> no, yeah. um, it would seem perfectly natural to me for people to say that. Um, and I guess the more the church as a whole is confident in blessing, in prayer, in in really drawing down on the resources of God, that has to be a good thing, really. I mean, I think mm. one of one of the challenges we've often faced is that church life can either become all about the head and not the heart you know it's all about what we think and what we do as opposed to what we feel and you know feelings and emotions mm. are bad and all of that stuff that's come down through previous generations but but i do think the more we can be sort of swimming in um what god is doing and what the holy spirit's doing and i think blessing is a big part of that then then the better really how do you think blessing changes people i mean does it fall like rain is it you know it's almost like saying lord we want you to sort of rain on them and they get the the benefit as if it was raining is it that you know i mean what happens we we pray that blessing however it ends and with the amen what then do you think happens to the person that's heard it i think to some extent it's down to that person because if that person is open to it um i guess to get your analogy of, of the rain <laughs> the blessing falling down them like rain it, it would be like them going out without an umbrella in the rain yeah. um they can either be closed to it in which case nothing really happens um or they can be open to it and uh feel god's presence with them and um feel god working through them mm. and somebody much wiser than I am once said of prayer that you know what's the reason for praying we pray because God changes us so that we can change the world and I would say that's very much true of blessing as well that you know God will change us if we let him um, for us to change the world so it's um, I think it does have a real impact if we let it mm. but only if we let it if we let and it, it is, I think, I think we said before, 
you know, it can change us as people saying it as well. Sure. I mean, often if you are at the front of a church meeting or building or, and, and you offer a blessing, you will see people will either cross themselves or some yeah. will open up their hands as if they are receiving a gift. Yeah. I, I think that helps me. I think in a more charismatic setting where I was before, um, it would be quite usual to see people with their hands out expecting God to do something. Mm. Um, and I think showing that they're, they're ready to receive something. And I think the more sort of Catholic crossing um, it is the same thing, really. It's saying, you know, here's mm. something I want to seal in my heart. Here's something yeah. that I want in my life. Um, and I, I, I think actually, as time goes on, I'm more and more, you know, encouraging of that sort of, uh, of those visible demonstrations, because I think they are visual demonstrations of what is happening inside. You know, we're, we're receiving mm. something. Um, and, and I think whether you bow your head, whether you cross yourself, whether you've got your hands open, it is that sense of here is something that, you know, God has got yeah. for me. Um, and, um, yes, it's not just, not just empty words or an empty gesture of a, the sign of the cross or whatever. No. Yeah. I remember one of the first people that ever prayed for me in a sort of, you know, laying on hands to pray for you. And I can't remember what it was about, but it doesn't really matter. Um, but it was this lady who was slightly deaf and suddenly, you know, as I closed my eyes thinking, right, they're going to pray for me. And I was a bit nervous because you're never quite sure what's going to happen if somebody's praying for you. Now, of course, you're much more familiar with it. But I just remember this old lady's voice, rather posh lady, sort of bellowing in my ear, hands out to receive. And, you know, it was almost like a military order. And I thought, blimey, you know. And for me, the moment was gone. The, you know, I'm sure God was still <laughs> blessing me, but I was just awash with, dear Lord, what, what's she going to do to me? Um, God Sergeant Major. <laughs> it was a sort of powerful reminder of, you know, be kind when you're blessing others, really. Um, yeah. um, you know, don't shout at them before you then ask God to bless them. Yeah. Remember that gentleness is a fruit of the Spirit. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Absolutely. Oh, dear. Do you, do you think, and um, final question, do you think we are changed by blessing others? I, I spoke earlier in the video, you haven't had the chance to see it, but it really is based on um, the two books that I was encouraging folks to read, uh, The Way of Blessing and The Grace Outpouring, which tell of um, Roy Godwin's amazing ministry um, mm. down there in Wales. Um, do you th are you changed by offering a blessing to others? Do you think it softens your heart or do you think it, it just reminds you that you also need God's blessing? How, how as a priest are you changed by offering the blessing i would say both of the things you said that it softens your heart and it reminds you that it, you know we need god's blessing as well um and it reminds us going back to one of the first things i said that and it reminds us that the whole of life is a blessing and it reminds us to, to continue to be a blessing to others in yeah. as much as we can so yeah, I would say it changes, you know, if you're in a, a context where you were blessing a particular person, there were other people around as well. I would like to think that everybody there was, was changed in some way, that it, it's not just, um, you know, this bolt coming from God affecting that person, you're, particularly that person you're praying and nobody else. Yeah. Like, yeah everybody would be. I mean, one, of, one of the things I tend to do if I'm invited in to pray for somebody shortly before they die, and this isn't quite how we plan to end the video, but hey, um, that's how our conversation goes. One of the things I quite like to do is A, use oil, which I know is something you do mm. because it's very visible. It's a visible sign that mm. you know, we're, we're asking God to do something, but also to involve others in the family. So yes. you know, if you go to a home, a hospice, hospital bed, um, you can involve everybody else. And I, and I remember very vividly um, praying for a dear Christian person that was part of our church family um, and who, who was reaching the end of their life. Um, and th this was in a previous parish, so I'm not breaking any stories here. Nobody needs to try and guess who it was. Um, but actually involved the other family members around the room. And at the end, the son and the daughter just looked me in the eye and said, wow. You know, mm. they'd received something in holding hands to for me to pray for their parent they'd received something you know strength for today um you know a sense of of peace i don't quite know what it was and um 
one was a Christian, one wasn't, you know, it just touched them in a, in a really powerful way. And I think, you know, that, that for me is, is the God of surprises who rolls up and blesses and um, people are changed. And I think, as you say, you know, for people of no faith as well, a blessing can be quite a powerful thing that has quite an impact, an immediate impact on them and, and is very meaningful. Yeah. Um, which perhaps surprises them as much as sometimes it might surprise us. You know, yeah. if you do a house blessing, yeah. um, you know, people ask you to do a house blessing, they might be nothing to do with the church, but they think it's something they want and they can be really miserably, visibly moved by it. Yeah. And um, it's quite something. Absolutely. Well, we're going to end there if that's okay. Um, last yeah. week, I realised, and my wife berated me actually afterwards, I cut you off saying amen at the end of the video. You see your mouth moves and you don't hear a word because you're then cut off. So today I am not going to do anything until you have finished. Um, just to, just to be absolutely uh, clear. But thank you for joining us. And no, that's fine. For folks watching, there won't be a video next week. We're going to take a week's break next week uh, from video making. Um, there are newsletters and things going out as normal. Um, th this week, which is uh, Thursday the 4th of June, something like that. Yeah, it is the um, yeah. Thursday the 4th of June. I don't know where days are going. Um, and, and there will be extra resources for next week. We're just going to have a slightly easier week next week. Um, but we do wish you well. We do wish you every blessing. And uh, Roger, do you want to say goodbye? And then I save myself cutting you off yet again. Goodbye, everyone. Good to see you. <laughs>